Look how the stars turn on. Look how the stars turn on. Hello and welcome to season four, episode 28 of the Press Box in association with the unit. So it's been another quiet week for the club with the financial issues Dundalk have been enduring laid bare last Thursday when manager John Daly revealed that the players hadn't been paid. A statement from club owner Brian Ainscough then followed on Monday, confirming that reports of financial difficulties were exactly true. This had led to huge speculation about the club's future. And on this week's show, we're going to discuss this crisis while also reflecting on the 2-1 defeat to St. Patrick's Athletic last Thursday and look ahead to our trip to Waterford on Friday. There's only one place we're going to start, and I suppose that's a situation that we find ourselves in, sadly, financially, with the club's future up in the air. And I suppose with that, we did have a few comments. We'll just get quickly into the comments, and then I suppose we'll have a discussion Um that will probably answer most of these questions anyway. So, uh, firstly, Simon Canning said, Dundalk is a business with a lot of jobs at stake. Uh, the government usually supports struggling businesses to support local employment. Where are our local TDs and reps who would be making soundings if it was a factory under threat of closure? Jared Foley said, it's a very bad situation, but it was coming for a long time. Previous owners must share the blame also. If a new takeover was to happen, creditors will have to take a big haircut. Hope wages are paid all before Friday's game. Uh, Fundalk FC said, morally, I think the club should be paying the debts in full, even if it means taking a few years. The club will poison its reputation locally if it screws over local companies. I think also the previous owners who I thought would be great have absolutely wrecked their club. Johnny Lynch says... Um, allowing a takeover uh, reliant on investment to see out the season is negligence on behalf of a number of parties. Any GoFundMe donation by the 1903 should be in exchange for shares like any investor so that greater influence can be gained to avoid a reoccurrence of this situation. Uh, Kieran Harmon said, just for the on-field stuff, is there any truth in the rumour that Goddard has to play all games as Blackburn picking, as picking up his wages? It sounds crazy, but it seems the only explanation of continually picking him when he's so far out of his depth. Right. So, that's a few comments. People are obviously all over the place. Uh, we will discuss. We'll go back to the start, which was last Thursday. Uh you know, there was obviously rumours last week on our pod, you know, you referenced that we were in uh, a bit of issues financially uh, and it was confirmed on Thursday. You were talking daily. Uh, he also confirmed that he wasn't paid along with his players and staff. Um, and we'll take it from there, from you. So you spoke to John, he confirmed it. And I suppose there's then a lot more information kind of after that in the subsequent few days. Yeah, like uh, uh, I was aware of it before the game. Obviously, you don't want to make too much of it for what was an important match. But obviously, you had to put it to him after the game. To be fair to John, I thought he handled the whole thing really well. I spoke to John Mountney as well. Um, and very difficult. Didn't feel overly comfortable asking about it, you know, because it's, it's a difficult question to ask. But like they handled it really, really well. I think they understood my position as well, that you have to ask these questions. Um, and yeah, like it's just, I suppose this has really escalated really quickly from the perspective of, um, I've been talking a long time about financial difficulties, uh, probably being dismissed as sensationalist or whatever, but it's quickly becoming abundantly clear that, um, you know, I don't want to say I told you so, but um, you know, I've been rabbiting on about this since the end of twenty twenty two, um, and I don't know, like I I I was looking back on an article I wrote May twenty three, when the twenty twenty two accounts, yeah, twenty twenty two accounts came out, um, showing that we were basically hemorrhaging money and you know it's interesting to look back on that today because you know i would have said like 
as well as you know there were calls at the time for a bit more transparency and all of this but i also said fans needed to get their head out of the sand as well um and you know you were just dismissed as like i mean even the article on the front it wasn't my decision to put it there by the way but the the decision to put the the the, the Dundalk FC story on the front pages of the Argus last week. You know, you're you're again being accused, you know, it's rumor, it's sensationalist, it's media hype, it's trying to sell newspapers or whatever. Um like again I I I didn't even tweet that story from my own Twitter account, for example. So it's nothing to do with looking for a story. I don't work directly for the Argus, so I don't really care if to sell papers maybe I shouldn't say that but I'm not directly employed by them so it makes no odds to me whether to sell five papers or 50,000 um, but this has been going on a long time and it's only maybe now that the supporter space so waste up but I know you probably will draw on the 1903 soon uh, and this isn't a go with them but it's long 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 time ago that we needed to sort of wake up and get together as a supporter space but like i say heads were in the sand and you're now in a situation where and i hope this isn't the case by the way but like the very existence of the club and i know that's the nuclear option but the very existence of the club is is very much on the line but that's reality and i think that's the conversations that fans ourselves people around the club right now are having uh, with creditors um, people involved in the club um, are speaking to different parties in regarding the takeover um, there's, so, there's, there's so much to, to go with um, creditors so the club owe a lot of money to different parties there's revenue as in their revenue um, there's uh, Garda Shea there's businesses such as you know I don't know. Uh, legally, we allowed even name any of these, or is this a? Well, well, I, I'll, 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 I'll come in on that because one of the biggest, uh, the biggest creditor is the revenue, but um, one of the biggest sort of creditors that that is owed a lot of money by the club, and you're talking in excess of one hundred twenty thousand, is our kit suppliers player fit now. I did ask permission to mention them. I don't want to go into individual. There's a, there's a lot of businesses. If you want to go down that route, there's a lot of people, staff, former staff, players, ex-players, etc. If you want to go down that route, uh, the list is long. Um, but like, and this isn't a go with them or whatever, but I heard a line on another podcast the other day saying, as far as we're aware, there's no issues with suppliers. And I had to laugh at that because our suppliers are literally owed a six figure sum that you know is probably this is a business that's not quite six years old yet um i don't know how they're performing as a business or whatever and i hope i hope it's good but we've seen in the past see export that i think anyone who had their their jerseys their coats their gear or whatever it was excellent stuff no one doubted the quality but it obviously wasn't commercially viable because it's not there anymore. And uh, the likes of 120, and I don't want to get too speculative in this because of, out of respect to player fit they're, and, and the backers of this podcast, and we thank them for that, but they, um, that could potentially close a business or it could cost people jobs. And it's, you know, I think Fundalk FC, whoever he, she, or they are, uh, mentioned it there that like, you are screwing over local companies, but you're also screwing over local people because they're people who will go out and spend in the local economy, be it go into you for a haircut or, you know, eat in the local restaurant or do their shopping in the local supermarket or whatever it is. So this all has knock on effects for the wider community. And, and the dog is always sort of call itself a community club. Um, so, like the situation is very scary. Look, I'll I'll outline it again as best I can, and and I'd be aware of the, a lot of the figures. But like, if you take say the revenue bill, the guardy, the the local authority alone, and and um because they're not, you know, I'm not talking about someone's, you know, pride joy in terms of their business. Like the bill's nearly four hundred thousand for those alone, um. Or there, thereabouts, around four hundred thousand mark. So, like as I outlined last week, we're coming up to a point where 
in the next sort of month or so, the accounts for 2023. So kind of end of the sort of stats sports Andy Conley year and the start of the, uh, just at the start of the Brian Ainscoff year. So before he took over, they're going to be made available soon and they will show we were in the red somewhere in the region of about 1.2 million, as I said. Uh, I'm led to believe that figure is now closer to 2 million. Um, in the region of two million is what we are, what we owe all in, um, and that gives you the this problem of, like, Brian Inskov has issued a statement. Look, people can make their minds up on it, whatever way they what they like, um, but probably for the first time in this whole scenario, there's a bit of transparency. Too little, too late. Some might say, um, and I w- maybe wouldn't disagree with that, but. You know, he did admit there's financial difficulties. He did admit that, you know, he's struggling to, yeah, or, or the main goal is at least, you know, try and get the club to the end of the season. There's a what happens then, even if that particular goal is made, that has to be the priority now. But um, as of, and we were, I'm speaking here at half 10 on Tuesday night, uh, as of an hour ago, the player still hadn't been paid. Um, I just made that check just before we started recording. Now, they could wake up tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning for for those because people will listen to this at different times, and the money's in the bank. Um, but so there was a meeting with the PFEI this week at, uh, with the players, and like they were informed that uh they would be paid for September, but it would more than likely come from a sort of solidarity fund via the FEI through UEFA and that's for future monies owed and, and stuff like that. So it's, they're sort of, instead of paying the club what they would, they'd, they'd give it to the players. But after that, they were pretty much on their own. Now that's a difficult scenario for any person, forget about their job but as a footballer, but any person to face that, they, that uncertainty of like, you don't know if and when you'll get paid um and then if there's going to be wages there, um because the, these guys are all in a situation where they can't sign for another club. Like their their job is, they're footballers. You know they're not. Um, this isn't like the the local deli closes down and you get a job in another deli or whatever. Um, they can't sign for another club till the first of January. Now, they, well, they can sign a pre contract or whatever, but they they can't sign and play until at least the 1st of January. So that's a long time, you know, three, nearly four months away. Um, and I don't know how many people and everyone's financial situations are di- are different, but how many people could afford to maybe take a hit of four months wages that they're expecting before they can potentially earn again. So it's a very messed up situation. Um the, you know the 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 the, the amounts outstanding are are absolutely scary. I know we've been in this position before, but you could multiply it by ten from what we were at in twenty twelve. Uh, you know, it's a bit like I I I was born in the eighties, but I didn't live in the eighties in terms of as an adult or whatever. And you hear people talk about in the eighties how difficult it was in terms of high interest rates and mortgages and all that and. It was a tough time for the country, etc. But the difference really was that no one really owed anything. No one had anything, but no one really owed anything in terms of massive amounts. But these are you're 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 talking seven figure sums here. Um and I know go the likes of GoFundMe's were set up today, etc. But even the target for that, if it was hit, it wouldn't pay the monthly wage bill in Oriel Park. So well intentioned, etc. I get it, but it's going to be much, much harder to get out of this than it was, what, 12 years ago. And the current scenario, um, the club, as Brian Ainscoff uh, said in the statement, are currently trying to talk to different uh, bidders. And I know kind of we were talking privately, there's a few different people interested in, is there any movement on that? Were you talking to Brian Ainscoff? And also with that, I suppose it's it's only fair that we actually discuss, I suppose, the options. Like examinership is something that we discussed, which as sadly 
we reference in regarding Dundalk and the local business scenario, it kind of burns a lot of businesses. It burns a lot of bridges, potential future business and stuff like that. And as you said about a community club, that's hard to build back. Um, and, I, and I suppose with that, what that means is that people would only get a certain small percentage of what they be owed, but it would keep the business alive. Um, but I mean, the, the options from some of the new people coming in like there, from what I'm being told as well, that people are trying to come in, we're trying to essentially just get it to the end of the year. So we're trying to raise whatever that money is. You know, if you're saying it's on average a hundred grand a month, uh, wage bill, salaries, etc., costs for the club. So we'll say, because September, obviously, from the start hasn't been paid. So if you take September, October, November, and December, so that's 400 grand in salaries alone that we'd have to come up with. as we Closer, reckon, to, closer to five, closer to okay. five. But Let's say whatever. That sort of, <laughs> at, at that stage, it's irrelevant. Um, we've so much other costs. Um, again, you could say, is it three home games? Three home games three remaining, home games. yeah. So and that's and, and, and that's this, this, this is another factor. Like, so, like, y- yeah, you talk about wages, but there's, and look, need, need to say, look, and maybe now is not the time for complete postmortems on what was or what, what, what didn't happen or whatever, but like, it, it's obvious some bills were paid, like the lights are still on. You yeah. know, you go to Oriel on a Friday night, the floodlights are still on, but that's a bill. Like, so there's some bills you simply have to pay. You know, uh, thankfully never been in a really bad financial position myself, but I know people who have, and you, you have to sort of choose what, what you're paying today. Like, do you pay do you pay the mortgage to keep the house versus, you know, you let the credit card bill slide or whatever it is. um, And, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, so it, it, it could, you'll hear different figures, but like it, it could easily take, three quarters from a million just to get this club to the end of the end of the year. And that's yep. you know, you you factor everything in with like transportation. Um they still have to get the games. You know, they're still We've underage uh, teams that need to get the games. Yeah, like look, just, we're gonna read yeah. it out later. I think well well just just last weekend, I think two of our teams were in Longford. Um there was a, definitely a couple of weeks ago there where I think we three or four teams in the Northwest. That's all you know, and by the way, the coach company is one of the teams or one of the people owed money. Um, there's there's housing for staff, like in ter- now when I say staff, I mean manager, players, etc. You know, um, you I presume you have to pay them or they're out in the rear. Um, I I I don't know if they're the ones outstanding or not, but what I'm saying is it 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 it's it's quite difficult just to get to the end of the year, and as I say. You've three home games left. Uh, okay. okay, 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 okay. But so we we say seven fifty, and th- th- this is where some of my issues come in. And and let's say again, on average, now there's more takings at a game. People will tell me, and merchandise as well is obviously a, a touchy subject as well because uh, that's pure profit for the club, as uh, as people know now as well. So they like they're they effectively haven't paid for their gear for this season and yet can still sell it and make pure profit. So I think they have additional income in that sense. But in the maths that I was going to say, like, so if you take an average gate of 2,000, okay, and even if you say a 1,000 of them are season ticket holders, which I assume that money's gone, let's be honest. And I'm being very kind to say that everybody's paying 20 euros for that extra 1,000. That's 20,000 per game. That's true three games, which is 60,000. And let's say there's an extra five grand in additional revenue. So 25 per game. So that can be any additional revenue. And I'm very much open to correction on anything, but that still works at 75 grand. In my head is their only incomings for these three games. And as you said, we now need to get to, as you said, 750 to just make it to the end of the year without debts, new income. And yeah. anyway, the, what I'm hearing is that the people that, want to come in just want to get to the end of the season but then that's where the conversations are at that well, it's... can can we can we flip it so like i get right you've heard a, a line in this right so where it's at where so you you've heard one and i'm not saying it's wrong but so you've heard one scenario right 
and I, I'm not, again not saying this wrong, there's probably been talks with somewhere between eight and ten different parties um, overall. Um, now, ideal scenario is, and this is ideal, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but ideal scenario is someone comes in, takes it over, says, I'll pay that, keep or let lads, try and stay up. The ideal scenario. The realist in you says that's not happening yeah. um, because there's no benefit. I'm not saying, and I'll just use them as an example because they were obviously linked to the club last year, but if Hull City wanted to buy Dundalk or go back to whatever their vision for Dundalk was 12, 18 months ago, whatever it was, um, why would they come in and pay off two million, even say half it, just say one million, quarter, half a million? Why would they come in and pay that when they can effectively wait to pick it up next year, either as a new club or, you know, when gone through the examiner process and you owe a lot less? And some of those debts are, are written off. Now, that inv does involve potentially burning, again, local people, local businesses, and potentially even players, staff. Um, but it, it, and this just, I hope I'm wrong on this, but it, it doesn't make business sense. And look, you, you're in business yourself. It doesn't make business sense. I don't see a way out of this where the people will. I they do think there'll be some sort of taker for it in terms of whatever that may be, but I don't see a scenario where everyone gets paid. Now, and that that's kind of, even the payments isn't my problem with that, if that makes sense. Because sadly, in this scenario, an examinership or trying to come up to deals and stuff, bad business decisions and stuff like that happen, and that's how these things get resolved and they have to move forward. So, in an element, I can accept that. But what I can't accept is that for the last 10 to 15 years, so 2012, we had the bucket out. We're trying to keep this club alive. We've had two Europa League um, campaigns. We've won numerous league titles, league cups in the Aviva Stadium. Um, and that's brilliant. So we've had a lot of playing success. And, and this is where it all kind of comes back to. And there's multiple ownerships, people, everything involved. There was never any ambition to think past six months. There was never any ambition, in my opinion, to think of a, an academy. Uh, you see Shamrock Rovers with Roadstone. I don't care about oh, South Dublin County Council did this, this and this. There's, if you have ambition and a drive to make something happen, it can be done. And we just haven't done anything, like anything. And that's what I'm saying. So like where we are right now, I'm not shocked. And, uh, and, it's... And, and it's, and the sinful part of it is for me, like, and I, I, I'm thinking of a guy, you know, I'm not going to name out of respect for him, but he isn't an Dock FC supporter, but I, I know a guy pretty well. And he, around about 12, 15 years ago, he had a bit of a health scare, um, had to give up work as a result of that health health scare. But what he did was he went out, he looked after himself, he, you know, altered his diet, he went walking every day, still doing that. And thankfully to this day is a very healthy man, you know, still there for family, still there for friends, still there enjoying his days in Oriel and everything else that goes on in his life. You know, whereas had he, you know, if I'm, God forbid, take a heart attack tomorrow and just sit at home and don't exercise and, you know, continue to, you know, fuel my body I don't particularly eat kebabs but you know what I mean that you know effectively do everything that you shouldn't do when you've had a health scare and I go to an early grave well it's hard to have sympathy for me mm. it really is hard to have sympathy for me and that's Dundalk FC we got yeah. our warning we got our warning in 2012 within two years we were winning a league title we had Europe every year after it. and look it's difficult to run a club and and there's been various people who have attempted it in in that in that period, but um, it it I, and I I'm, I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but there's a, the old saying is true: you make hay when the sun shines, and we, and we did were not. on top of the world. Yeah. We were getting so much good publicity out of it, and even basic things. And I get right, there's logic why you know 
dates might ensue and, and and I get all that. But like basic stuff, like so we went through years where we didn't even have a player of the year night. And people would say, Oh, why would you bother? Well, you've a full bar of people mm. spending money. Like most, like there's a lot of publicans in this town struggling, a lot of publicans around the country struggling. Yeah, I was reading a report maybe less than two, three weeks ago, but the number of pubs have closed both in Loud and around the country in the last sort of five to 10 years. And it's startling. And here you are with a, a you don't even have to make an effort. You just hand it, you hand be it Richie Towell in 2015 or whoever it was the year after, player of the year trophy, you give a couple of kids awards and you fill your venue. And there's pubs that would kill for that nowadays, and and even back then, uh, and that's a no brainer. But outside of that, there was no, like, we haven't run as much as a quiz night. And listen, again, referring back to the piece I wrote, going back to May, and it's just interesting to 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 see like you know sixteen months or whatever it is, um. You know, I did say at the time that they won't solve all ills, but at least if you're in a situation where, you know, you're bringing some money in, your debts aren't as bad. Your crowds are maybe bigger. But that's where you, you know, think long term. Like, again, what, yeah. what I find is that we're always just thinking kind of where we are now, maybe to a lesser degree, but can we get to the end of the season and we'll take it on next year? And again, this is much just my view on it, because that's what it seems to be. So we never have loads of people signed up for next year, ready to go. We're always in the the basket basement with players come January because we haven't got our shit together with the right players to come in. Uh, even going back to them 10 years, you know, if we had proper plans and contracts in place, Richie Tell was a huge asset to the club. Daryl Horgan was. Uh, Andy Boyle, both internationals at the time. We let all them go for free. You know, so you see what they've done in the likes of Roadstone. They've invested in 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 youth, in in proper academies, good football coaching, and they're selling these players. We're doing nothing. We can't sell our own best players in in that sense. Like we had to take cut down price for uh, Archie Davies because again we hadn't got the money. But it, it, without going just on a big rant about loads of things, it's just we never have anything in order. Nobody, in my opinion, thinks. We're in 2024. Will we be, are we looking to build and have a full going academy with five coaches in a base in 2030? Are we looking to have some sort of a new stadium by 2035? Are we, whatever this may be. And then you're secure in future. You're thinking long term. You're not just thinking every day. And it's the thinking of the club through the past 10 to 15 years for me that has now just caught up with us. And and again, you're right. There has been never been um, any sort of a, a thing of any fundraisers, um, guys knocking on doors, raising money. And again, I I also think that they're a massive help. But I just think there's also better ways to, that, that you can do that as well. I think you can just run things more professionally, but you have to put in hard work and, and it has to involve different people and I, I, I think that we'll always reference the likes of Sligo and Bowles in what they do Sligo Rovers how are they announcing a, a game with, with, with Celtic now next week or whenever that is and yet we're on our knees and the likes of a cash injection on a border town with Celtic football club coming over why are we not trying to do these things why is that we're we're fucked and like we could do it a hundred grand that that might take has anybody picked up the phone to Celtic? Has any like I don't know anybody, but nothing. And it's so at times it's like, and again, a lot of people will come back and say this. Oh no, people are trying to do these things, and it's not necessarily personal to anybody. It's over. I'm saying over ten to fifteen years, this sort of stuff hasn't been consistent. The odd thing has happened because I remember we did play like a Chelsea twenty ones. I think Brentford and stuff. Good days and stuff like that. You've gone back a long, long time there. Though. A long, long time. A very, there. very long time. A very long time. But like, again, so it, the odd thing has happened. Somebody could, comp- but I'm, what I'm saying is that there's a proper plan that, you know, um, again, I, I don't know, an example, when that Celtic game is on and is uh, whether it's their B team or not, if it is actually Brendan Rodgers, I don't know. Cause the sellout, it doesn't matter. They're in the mid-season. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, yeah. it's ambition and it's something. Whereas 
Yeah. I feel we haven't had anybody that's trying to do these things and and really puts the numbers in. So like, but this is what I'm saying. Like, and I, and I probably worded it wrong a few weeks ago when I I was referring to our um I don't know if they're called the development committee or whatever time around we were talking about the the large scale infrastructure fund or whatever, um and I I made the point where you know. A lot, like, and I repeat it, a lot of great supporters on that, you know, done amazing work for the club. But, and where I'm getting with that is when I, when I was looking for the expertise, so like you mentioned Sligo there. So like the, the head of the, the Sligo Rovers Development Committee is a guy called Mark Cummins. Mark Cummins' day-to-day job is he's a senior uh, executive officer for or whatever. He's high up in Sligo County Council. So a lot of, He's like an he's an engineer, so he's expertise day to day, but he also has a nice link into the council. Another person that sits on that committee and is also under management committee is a woman called Shona Hefferton, member of the local enterprise office. So you wonder why they get things done, because, and this isn't to do with the, the committee, but it, it's putting the right people in the right positions to make things happen, and. That wasn't done enough over the years. You know, it, you can have, like, Tommy Higgins, for example, is the chairman of uh, Sligo Rovers in the news recently because he, he was obviously known as the, the ticket master guy in Ireland or whatever. Um, but Tommy Higgins isn't out there organising the raffle, for example. He plays part or whatever. But you put people in charge of certain things and you let it happen. That wasn't done. And we have, and I always compare ourselves to Sligo, not only because they do it very well and fair play to them, but we are a similar sort of entity to that where we're town football mad um, and probably bigger potential just in terms of, you know, economics and, uh, you know, geography, population, all that. And we've never harnessed it. We've never harnessed it. And, this and is the frustrating, but this is this is the frustrating thing for me because, like, and I like in a, in other walks of life, and this isn't a I told you so, but in other walks of life, I look at journalism and I say, well, why is that question not being asked, or why is this not being, and it's weak, and is that journalism in twenty twenty four or whatever, right? I've been highlighting this stuff for years, and it just dismissed. Time and time again, you were you you like it was too easy to say. Well, you've a vendetta or you're a sensationist or whatever. Well, the fans wouldn't listen, you know, and it didn't help that you know you go back to you know I reported the club was for sale, accurate under Stat Sports. I reported major debts at that stage. You go back to that was January twenty twenty three, almost two years ago now at this stage, and like they ran and you know press release ran for them by a base in the, in the Irish Independent to discredit you. And it's that sort of stuff that people needed to wake up and they wouldn't. You know, we've had, I see the, the 1903. Are decisions. It is, it was the yeah, ownership. No, but, that... no, but we look at, we look at the, we talk about the 1903 because they did set off a co- co- fund me today, but it's kind of like, this is an organization going three years. Yeah. And if their first fundraiser coming up, and I'm not, and there's reasons for that, I'm sure, from their perspective or whatever, but we didn't care. We didn't. We everything was going to be okay. Everything was, yeah, everything was fine. It was never fine. The warning signs were there from a long, long, long way out. Now that's not to it. We haven't really talked about the current regime or whatever, but this was something that happened. Like Brian Ainscough is probably going to be the captain, you know that takes the ship down to a want of a better term. But the iceberg was hit long, long, long ago. And the water has just got too much on board. Um, And it going back to what we were saying, like, so I don't see a way out of this that people don't get burnt. So, and, and that's the sad part of this because it is local businesses. It is local, uh, you know, that has a knock on effect in the local economy. And, Ultimately, a lot of these businesses are people you need if there isn't like a, a reborn club or a restructured club or whatever. So like, right, even say Dundalk are in the first division next season and even say they're playing kids, we still need buses, you know. Yeah. We still need jersey numbers printed on, on tops. We still, you know, we still need jerseys. Um, So like... But a lot of what happens there is in bad credit. So for argument's sake... um. 
you know, if the club decide this year now to go with Puma, because obviously player fit will pull the plug, Puma know the story with them and will say money up front, lads, or a high or fifty percent up front or something like. Uh, so, yeah, you bus, burn goodwill as well. Bu- yeah, the, bu- burn- the bus company changes and it turns to Craig Colgan's buses. I'm saying, lads, up front every week or. It's paid every 30 days. And if not, I just won't be there. Like as Definitely. in players. Yeah. Players. And and that goes to academy players too, because ultimately a lot of like good good academy players have a choice. Like if I'm uh, a youngster from RD and I have a choice of Drahad or Dundalk, where am I going right now? Am I going to the club that maybe didn't pay their players? Yeah. With crap facilities, or am I going to the club, you know, with a direct link to England to have a track record of bringing players to England who are planning for a new training facility and stadium? Yeah, and, you know, and that's, so that's good planning. It's good ownership. It's good vision. And and that's yeah. my whole thing about this is is not today, not Christmas to get through to, but it's like what happens in five years and what happens in ten years. And nobody yeah. in the time that I'm supporting this club has ever had them visions ever or publicized them. They can say we can all say we've we've talked about this and we've tried to do this and there's issues with ownership of the the uh, facilities. But it's the, the, it's, it's the grants as well. Started. Yeah, but it's like the grants started. as well. So, like, if you look at it, right, and and I'm not saying it's unfair, but like the club did take black recently for not applying for the large scale infrastructure fund. There is a, a grant application in for um an, another uh, sports capital to try and you know help deal with the situation around the floodlights and the pitch. But how many years did we not apply for anything? So I'm not defending the here and now, but. For a decade there, there was nothing being applied for either. Um, so or, or very little. So but then we, but we, then we, you think of next year. So let like again. So the scenarios in my head is somebody does come in, gets us to the end of the season, and Goddard becomes Peter Schmeichel and we end up staying up. We win a playoff. Okay, so we go into the Premier Division. All the things that have happened. So there's no players wanting to come. Nobody's really going to be dying to come to Dundalk. And people, again, can I don't even care about the, this negativity anymore. People can start, we're in fucking reality here. We're Corker coming up with Shawnee Maguire and uh, Keating up top and big players, big money, bigger crowds and stuff. We're that bottom team. We're the draw of what we thought would be. And so we'd go straight down. So attendances will be poor next season as well. A lot of it has to do with winning matches and stuff. And I think if you're winning, people will come. And ultimately, we get relegated. Potentially, if deals aren't done and we're, we, whoever takes over potentially is on a shoestring and tries to get us to the next season and stuff rather than long-term stuff, which is where I genuinely think sometimes a reset is the better option. We do go to the first division. We do play 19s. We do reduce... Wait, well, we're probably we, we, we are probably looking at that. We like if if you if you're going and into this plan, it's not so bad. It's not so bad that we all get to take a, a step back and say, right, we've hit rock bottom. Well, it's bad. It's bad from the perspective that I don't see a way, and I get yeah, hope I'm wrong. I don't see a way of doing that. So if we're going into some examinership situation, you know, okay, some will be mutually agreed, others will be forcibly agreed, or maybe whatever. I, I don't see a way of doing that without burning an awful lot of people and local people and revenue, and maybe et cetera, that happens. does that but go maybe away? That happens. Maybe that happens. And I, I know, but that creates a... It's still not a win. Yeah, your your club might survive or whatever, but that is not a win. And it didn't need to there's get not, to this. There's not a lot of win. No, I'm saying... No, 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 no. It definitely didn't need to get to this. But there's not a lot of wins that can come out of this without somebody that comes in and I think... And there is op- opportunities for people that will come in and just clear debt. And that doesn't really say that then they'll put money into the future of the club, though. Or can't like I it's just such so up in the air, as you said, if there's eight different pe- parties and stuff and, and talks and stuff. But like Yeah, no, some of them will literally be explorative. So some of them will look at like like in any business, like if you put your house up for sale tomorrow, you know you're gonna get a couple of people through the door who look at it and say, nah, not for me. Yeah, um, or if it's a fixer up or too much work to be done or whatever. So you're you're looking for the one or two like in any sale that say 
yeah, I see an opportunity here. Um, and again, I really hope I'm wrong on this, but I don't see the benefit for anyone, anyone to walk in and say, I'll cover all debts as is. And we go again. Okay. Now, so you have a guy, you have a guy that has, has a few million in the quid. So nobody's looking at this. That is Joe. So, okay. So a guy that comes in and as you said, just as 2 million. So he clears 2 million. If, and then has ha, puts another two million, and I'm absolutely spitballing here into the genuine year playing budget and stuff for the year, and we do get Europe. Europe can then bring you another eight hundred grand. But we're in the first division, probably. <laughs> well, that's okay. Fair enough. Um, but if if we do say, and that's what I mean, like I I think to, 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 so so go back to the PFEI meeting just to put like a bit of context on this because Anna, I I don't know what's going to happen in relation to the FEI and by the way they have questions answer answer through all this process as well. Through the license but problems, by the way. so 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 the players have been told that effectively there is that solidarity fund or whatever that you know through the FEI that monies can be paid in advance that the Doc FC are owed and paid to directly to the players rather than to the club to pay their wages and they're hopeful. I think if I'm a player right now and look, I'll let them speak for themselves if, if they want to, but if I'm a player right now, it's my understanding that that is how they think they're going to get paid. So it's going to be true FAI that they'll get paid for September. After that, there's a question mark on it, right? But if that scenario is initiated and bear in mind, they haven't been paid, as I said earlier, they hadn't been paid as of maybe an hour ago. Um, is there a point, and I don't know the answer to this, but throughout all this, like true unpaid players, etc., can you, are you going to get a points deduction? So even if we go and win our last seven matches, um, as unlikely as that is, are you still going to be said, well, look, you're docked 15 points, lads, and you're probably relegated anyway. Um, the other scenario of this, right, and there's definite question marks to ask, how, and I've said it on this before, and then the, the the benefit and if anyone's arsed there's over 100 episodes of, of these podcasts to listen back to and I've asked the question before or posed a theory I don't know how we got a license last year based on a number of criteria yeah. but now that now that this is all out in the open how do we get a license for next year so you know well that's some of the, where we are now well, if you have somebody yeah, in that sorts but, monies you know and... but you, you just can't erase everything either so like in order to get a license you're not meant to have unpaid amounts to suppliers you're not meant to have unpaid amounts to revenue and you're not meant to have unpaid amounts to players there's mm -hmm. other criteria obviously to hit there's still the factor of we're meant to have new floodlights and a new pitch next year now again and this is what i'm saying even the I don't see a scenario out of this. And again, I hope I'm wrong and I don't want to be pessimistic. I'm trying to be realistic, but I don't see a scenario out of this. And again, we talk about the matches later and, and I think sitting here Tuesday evening, as far as I'm aware, the dog will be in Waterford on Friday and playing and trying to win a match. But I don't see a scenario out of this where we're in the Premier Division next year. Mm. Even I don't if... see that necessarily as a bad thing sometimes. Like, no, like, but you're talking. You're talking about getting into Europe the following year and all this. Like it, what I'm like. So when you do that, when you do that, like so, everything suffers. So, look, and I know maybe you'll argue that, uh, okay, wage bills etc. are are less, but so is your season ticket sales. So is your sponsorship. So is your is your season ticket sales. Uh, I I don't. Yeah. I, I I would. Nah, I, I you're not. You're, you're, you're not. You're not. You're not getting your away fans, your number of away fans. Okay, like, with, all, with, all, with all with all due respect to your Coves and your Wexfords yeah. and your Kerrys, etc., they're not bringing what shells and pats just as the last no, two teams to visit or are bringing. That'll cover so, your loss in wages. I think that the difference, like stuff like that. No, I, 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 it's I, it's very difficult. But like what I'm what I'm saying is like, and, and I'm just being realistic about it, like we're probably heading back to the first division, <laughs> you know, and and just prepare yourself for that because. Like, again, you're hearing people, oh, well, if, we, if we win the last few, and like, I was oh. that person a few weeks ago before all this emerged, but, um, you know, as Brian's, uh, Brian Ainscoff's statement said, he was hopeful of getting investment that maybe would have saw it through. And when you do see things like, you know, there was Daryl Horrible, there was also Sean Kyo signing contracts. There was other players 
maybe in discussions or certainly offer deals. So yeah. you're thinking, right, I know it's not great, but it's obviously getting to the end of the year. That Even that's up and, 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 and listen, you're probably right. There probably is going to be something happens how soon that will be because, look, due diligence is obviously required that maybe wasn't there in the previous handover. But it, there probably will be some sort of like group comes in and tries to get it to the end of the year. And that's very admirable. And I'm sure they'll have some sort of hope or plan, um, be it trying to attract, you know, a multi-club model or whatever it is. And that's maybe a dream scenario to sort of, you know, bolster the thing again. But it's realistically going to be from the first division. And when you're saying, right, hypothetically, a guy comes in with two million and wipes it and another two million to build it. What I'm saying about that is it's not worth it. Because, you but know, people with that money, do, like not always is on an ROI. They're not always looking for that. So, yeah, and that's they, what I'm saying. Know, I'm, so, I'm what, picking this from the arse, like this. Yeah, uh, and that's what I'm saying. Like, happened, so, going back to half an hour ago, what I said was best case scenario here is that a white knight comes in, basically clears everything and says, right, lads, go at it. I'm just realistic enough to say, I don't see that. And I very much hope I'm wrong. Mm. I, that, like, I'd love. It's not going to be him, by the way, but I'd love if we rocked up tomorrow and said someone, Larry Goodman has bailed the club out. He's stuck in 10 million. Yeah. There's a new ground coming. It's, but it's Disneyland stuff. It's not real. It's, it's, oh. it, we're, we're in a bleak, bleak situation. And again, um, with Keep the amounts owed, there's no, there's no benefit. Like the club isn't worth that because, um, you have to put a value on anything, you know, like, and I know values in the eye of the beholder or whatever. And maybe like if a diehard and dog fan wins the Euromills this Friday, maybe to say, yeah, there you go, lads, I'm doing it, take it over, whatever. But in the absence of that, in the absence of a local, what's, what's the benefit? Like I care about, the player fits of the world and other local businesses that might be owed money because I live in this community. I know people who work for some of the businesses affected. Um, I'm aware of the sort of knock on effects that, you know, three people lose the job, maybe to stop going to you for a haircut, whatever it is, you know, the, 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 the knock on effects of people losing uh, finance, etc. But if I'm anyone outside of this area, I don't particularly care about that. I can pick up something, you know, it's like be it a house that's repossessed, a car that's repossessed. Why would I pay you 20 grand for your car today when I could maybe buy it for three, four grand at auction in January? And that's hard to hear, but that is where I see it. And I hope someone comes out and proves me wrong. I really do. And I'd be, it's not even humble pie. It's just I'm I'm trying to see a scenario in this where what's the value to me to wipe everything, even if I had it. As I say, maybe a local, if they had it, does it for the, the greater good. And as you say, they're not looking for a return on investment. But most people that come into football, and like just to use Dundalk as an example, Peak Six were investors. Uh Brian Inscuff was an investor. Um, you know, they're looking now. I personally think some of them are mad that you know, how do you ever expect to get money back out of this? But it's very they hard to run a anything. club. That's what the wild thing is. Like, but, but but it's very hard to run a club starting at zero, never mind minus two mil. Yeah. And like I say, there's so many more things. Even if you wipe the debt tomorrow. The, the current situation, even to get to the end of the year, is still, you know, you're talking, put it this way, it's closer to a million than half a million um, just to get to the end of the year, probably, without burning anyone, that is. And then you still have the, the you know, the legacy issues of the ground, the fact that can we get a license? Because certain things don't go away, like, the revenue thing, for example, you, you well, maybe if the debts are paid, it's less relevant. But, like, the FAI are going to have egg in their face over this too because, like I say, I don't know how we got a, got a license. I really don't understand it. 
to be honest, and maybe listen, someone involved in the licensing process will explain it to me, but knowing things, you know, like with outstanding amounts to players, and it's before they were not paid last week, by the way, um, with outstanding amounts to the revenue, you know, with outstanding amounts to suppliers, we shouldn't have been operating in this league this year, in my opinion. But maybe someone will explain it to me differently. And I didn't like I never want us to not compete in the league. It would pain me to see the dog back in the first division. Um, it would pain me to see this club potentially fold. I think that's a nuclear option that I don't think will happen. You can't fully rule it out, but um it's it's still scary, scary times. And you know, the the overall sense for me is one of sadness because I don't think this needed to happen. And it's, do you know what? The glory days are great, but no matter who you follow, like you know, I use Liverpool as an example, they went 30 years without winning the league. And even the one they did win was in COVID and fans didn't get to celebrate it pop- properly. And that's not a go with Liverpool or anything like that, in case anyone thinks that. But my point being, there'll be I more sort of hard. The title, to be fair. No, but there's well, there's my point being there's more sort of hard days than 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 good in terms of silverware. But what it's about is, you know, it's the father and son who meet up um on a Friday night. It's the mates who get together, you know, to go to a match or or hit a road trip or whatever it is. Or you know, it's it's the families like you know, thinking of the the Kevin Mullins of the world that brings his three daughters all around the country. Uh, you know, home or away, you know, and, and that, you know, my memories as a kid are in a car with my parents, do you know what I mean? And and they have that special thing, you know, and you, where do you replace that? Like I was reflecting on this week, the amount of people I would know less if football, like if, well, not if football was the thing, if Dundalk FC didn't exist, the amount of, the fewer people I would know, you know, I think my life would be, Lesser first, you know what I mean. Like it, it, it's there's something special. Like uh, I know Kieran Burke, who does between the stripes, was on was on Twitter saying like he met his fiance through through or like basically Oriel Park. So like this is it's a big part of people's lives, and as well as that, it keeps like the spirit of people alive too. So like you you think back to some of the amazing sports I've seen. Marty Shields' anniversary was the other day. You know, I'll never forget the likes of the Jim Murphys of the world, the, you know, the, the Mick Slevins, um, you know, great people. And there's far too many to name, like the Harry Taffs, et cetera, the Mickey Foxes. You know, you could, you'd be here, you'd want, you'd want to be a podcast from, from now till Christmas to name them all. But what I'm saying is every time you go into or you, you, you sort of think of these people or someone does. Do you know what I mean? And that's the special thing about it. And and you see other clubs, fans maybe taking joy in it or whatever. Um, and I think that's wrong because I think it's wrong to see any club fail. Yeah, slag when we're bottom of the table and slag when we lose a game and all that. But there's no joy to be taken out of this. And I'm not just saying that because it's my club on this occasion. But realistically, this league is a ticking time bomb. Like I don't know if anyone read the Business Post article at the weekend with John Martin from Rovers and and their financial situation and the cuts they might have had to make had they not made the the, the Europa League or the Europa Conference League group stages this year. And and by the way, if you, if you remember, they were last been a penalty away from going out or not going out, but losing their first round game. Um, you know, the Derrys of the world, the Pats of the world, they're very lucky to have a benefactor there who's willing to say, you oh, know, I'll take a hit, I'll take a million hits or I'll take this hit or whatever. Um, but what if they run into difficulty or you know, what when their time comes, like which <laughs> what all our times will come? Um there's very few clubs that can probably say they're run sustainably. There are a few. There are a few. Um Sligo are definitely one. Bows are probably another, um, and they're the ones we should pro- perhaps be leaning on. Um, but it needs strong leadership, and we haven't had that. And I mean that from a supporters' base as well. You know, we're too divided, probably. Um, and I don't know how we get ourselves together on that. I really don't. Yeah. Um. I suppose we can we'll leave that part there. Um. Again, even maybe what is this Tuesday night? Any maybe, good news? No. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say maybe somebody listening on uh 
on Friday, maybe we'll have a new owner and he sorted all our problems. But, and uh, again, I, I really hope so. And I'm not trying to cast any sort of, this isn't for sensationalism or whatever. I'm just trying to be realistic about where we find ourselves. And but it, I it, think it, it shows fans everything. need to be aware of that. Everything it shows. To, and, and sorry, I, I, I agree with you. And I'd be the first man to call you out on any bullshit, to be fair. And I think a lot of the stuff that you've said, the criticism and the negative um, comments and stuff that you get actually annoys me. And nothing to do with being a friend or something. But I, what I'm saying this is genuinely from a, a reporting point of view. I'm like, well, this is this is fact. And, and, and Dundalk sometimes can be a weird place that people don't like to kind of accept how things are going, but also do things. And, and again, that, uh, we are going to move on to the... Um, uh, God, the Pats. <laughs> um, but I w- but I will say before you wrap on that is like the, the, and it, this is where I suppose your heart goes out. There's a very real human element to that. I know there's an awful lot of the dog fans hurting right now. I would include yeah. myself in that. I think, yeah. but we are not out of it. Like there's 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 good people still up in Oriel Park and they're not even getting paid. And again, I don't know anyone's financial situation. You'd like to think they all have a nice little slush fund there that they can dip into to see them through this whatever um but i'm also trying to be realistic and that's probably not real life either so you know it it's very tough for them um again i, I just want to I, I did say it already but the way john daly and john mountney I, I mean they're a credit to the club um and particularly i feel for the likes of say john andy um you know People like that who been around the club a long time have experienced some wonderful highs. And and if this is how their time at the club ends, it's it's an awful way to go out. You know, they've been amazing servants. Um it sounds like an obituary when I'm saying this, and 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 maybe it's not, but um, you know, they're in a very difficult situation and and do you know what? It's 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 so sad. I, I'm not even. I'm probably you know the, the people talk about to us. It's, it's the seven stages of grief. Um, it's just sadness to be honest with you. I'm I'm feeling all week. It's I've probably gone past the anger a yeah, long time ago because the anger's been there. But, um, yeah, it's um, look, I I, I know Brian. And he'll take criticism and look his maybe his time to speak on the matter will come. And look, there's numerous ownership regimes that maybe have questions to answer, but I know he is working hard to try and leave it in the best place possible. But it's hard to be it's hard to be overly realistic like you know how we got into this was looking for investors that weren't there or weren't willing to come in to begin with so what change what changes now just because you're in more trouble um but the big thing about it is like there's people and as i say really good people you know without wages and and that's the, the the sad human element to that um Anyone with kids, it's you know they've just gone back to school. It's an expensive time, etc. Um, to be without wages, no one should. I think John Daly summed it up well. He said, "No one should, uh, do a week's work and not get paid for it." Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and uh, I suppose I feel we're probably over an hour in. This is where, you know, you referenced the likes of 1903 earlier. And this is where I have, and I genuinely am going to give you a two minute thing because this is not something I actually want to go on too much about. But again, so as of now, we're at 2320 on Tuesday. There's over 12,400. So we'll say 12 and a half grand in a, in a brilliant um, incentive and in trying to fundraise for the club. Um, so 12 and a half grand shows that there, there is money there um but again when you're talking about connected minds and stuff and as you said earlier there's reasons for people that they couldn't do much but again as you said the 19 or three or three and a half years in existence the first fundraiser is going to be next week proper funder i'm sure somebody could correct me on that but like a proper genuine fundraiser that could make a few bob um 
you know, next, now they're next doing month, a, next, next month, sorry, next month, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but like now we're, we're doing a, a, a fundraiser to raise money, which in theory could be needed. But as you said, again, as, as amazing as it is, the 12 grand is won't do anything. Um, it was between two statements of the club is grand to eight in the morning. Oh, we're doing a fundraising because we can't, we don't know what's going on and we want to help the club. And I get the ambition, but I just thought with the 1903 and that's all of us, we're all members. But I, I, I think, as I said before, sometimes these things should be consulted and pro- proper things in place. And again, I know, I think again, there's talks of a potential meeting next week and all these things to do things, but we're too late. We're too late in that sense. And that's nothing to do with just the 1903. There's other supporters, other supporters groups that could have put stuff together, but none of us did it. So we're all to blame. And I think putting a fundraiser together that gets a bit of, uh, or GoFundMe, to get a bit of traction. And let's say in the next few days, it comes to 20, 25 grand, which would be outstanding. I don't know what that does. I don't know that what the goal is. Uh, again, I don't know where it goes. It, it, it wouldn't um, be the outstanding bus bill. It, it, you know, it, so, and and again, it's it's credible, and there's amazing people that put money, their hard earned money, and that's kind of what annoyed me because I kind of I, I don't want to feel that I'm like God. I see these people putting in this money, and where's it going? Where is it going? To just nothing, oblivious, as you say, examinership to pay off a tiny thing, and and that just hasn't been confirmed. But the point of making about all that is that we all as a collective didn't do something they had that three three years ago when they had that was their chance and people pay membership every year for this and again it just probably hasn't gone as they've anticipated and i don't think this probably has helped their scenario um but i think it's good people there but i i think ultimately what's happening now is it's a it's it's reaction over proactiveness again and when i say proactiveness a supporters club what i would like is a a finite project. Uh, we're trying to raise the, two years ago. We're trying to raise a hundred grand because we want to give the club a hundred grand. And we want to build a mono stand. We want to raise fifty grand and we want to build a new bar, the Oriel Parks and Bits. It's getting not a lot of twenty first and thirtieth, as we said. We want to change that around, put in fifty grand, a hundred grand, whatever it costs, and do it up and get it as a, an amazing bar that people want to come to. But there's just been none of that, and it's hard to get behind that to throw money. At something that we don't know where it's going and as you said it's probably in irrelevance right now sadly as much as it's an amazing thing that people are giving their hard earned money and believe me I genuinely know how hard it is for everybody working and we all know we're putting in hours to get money in and stuff so to give back to the club is such an amazing gesture but in the overall scheme of things we're three years too late with that project to be honest with you like I think if, as I said a few finite projects that we could have got behind, we could have really indulged together in regarding a new stand, a new anything. And and it could be smaller, but there's just nothing financially that we really are able to say, boom, we did that. Or there was a hundred grand there that if something did happen and we knew about it a few months ago, a year ago, as you say, but when we kind of was ticking on, you can come in and say, listen, let us cover that and we'll sort kind of the, the but it was just none of that. So, and I'm making this point before anybody in the 19 or three thinks this is a personal thing, because honestly, I would say I've had 15 to 20 people getting on to me to say, please bring this up, that they felt un, un, unvalued as a member and that people just get to make decisions and stuff. And I don't know nor care if it's right or wrong now. As you said, we're all past this anger and all that. But I think for that, like it needs members input rather than just reactive things and i think if if two to three years ago three years ago when this was set up if we had genuine goals and plans and aspirations like for argument's sake you know and you can correct me if i'm wrong that mono stand in bows i keep going back to but it just say that is a hundred grand think of the revenue that could bring in if that was a family stand or something that or a hospitality stand that just brings in money it's a revenue driver we're probably still in the shit, but we still have something that can bring money in. And and it's just something, it's a goal. And as I said, I wanted to reference that from the amount of people that actually did get on to me to genuinely 
make a point to say that they were just disappointed that probably it didn't get enough traction as a genuine supporters club in regarding funding, doing things every year, fundraisers, et cetera, et cetera. And while I do think it's very admirable what's happening with the money, although I don't know what is happening or where it's going to go. Um, sadly, I just think in that sense, it's a bit too little too late. And I think maybe all of us need to take a look at ourselves in that sense because none of us probably called it out years ago when we wanted to or just didn't care, as you said. Because, you know what, three years ago, maybe we were close enough to being in the Europa League. So things we weren't really looking at that. And now here we are. So I think for me, and as I said, other people, I think the supporters clubs, we all need to have a bit more unity. But I think fixed goals is going to be a huge thing going forward. Consistent fundraisers, but goals that isn't just a pot for a pot's sake. But let's have a big goal of a hundred grand, two hundred grand for like you see in one day. It's it's an extravagant um amount, and it's a very weird scenario because the club is potentially going out of business. But in one day, less than one day, because it was eight a.m. I seen the thing. There's twelve grand. Twelve. There's probably more now than I'm talking. So people would like to support the club, but I think it's. It's it just needs a proper goal and a, and a vision. And I think that's where our, all of us as supporters do need to come in. And I think if that can just be a discussion for another day, but I think it's something that does need to happen going forward, especially showing the consistent scenarios that we find ourselves in financially. Yeah, look, I, I don't disagree with you on many of those points, but what I will say we're all to blame for that. Um, I don't want to be particularly you know, harsh on the people who stood up and tried to, you know, make a go with this or whatever. Um, do I agree with, uh, trying to be as nice as possible, do I agree with everything they've said and done? Um, press releases at times, not just this week. Uh, no, not at all. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. But what I will say is that we are both members of the 1903 as well. And there's many more. I was at the I was at the AGM this year and I don't think you'd have got three five aside teams out of those in attendance. Um and that maybe shows the level of interest in the club from a supporter space in terms of getting actively involved. And we need and this is, again, no disrespect for people there because I'm talking more generally here, but I'm a firm believer the right people or right person in a specific position can move mountains, make things happen. And we need someone like that to to sort of oversee this. And look, it's 24 euro a year or something. It's you wouldn't get two rounds if you went for pints probably now with, with something like that. There's, there's lunch places you wouldn't get lunch for 24 euro in this town. Um, but it needs some bigger ambition. And you're right. That like, I mean, the, unfortunately, the problems at Oriel are endless. Like we regularly hear complaints about the toilets, the bar facilities, um, I'm led to believe that the you know the amount required to say reopen the YDC, which could actually generate revenue for the club, isn't outlandish. You know things like, uh, and I'm, again I don't know the figure for that off the top of my head, but hypothetically if you had a hundred grand there, could you open the YDC or get close to opening the YDC, and then at least there's a revenue stream. Um, but it needs leadership. It needs. Again, the right, and that's not trying to be disrespectful to the people who are there. Um, there are some good people involved in the nineteen oh three as well, but it's probably lacked that direction at times for me. Anyway, and as I'm only speaking as a supporter when I say that, um, but we're all to blame for that because you know what, I didn't put my hand up either. Mm. As, absolutely, like, absolutely, there's, there's, all of us. There's 
and I'm not saying I'm the right person for the job either, by the way, but what I'm saying is there's 350 odd members of the 1903. And I think if there was 15 at the AGM, I'd say was the height of it. Now you could look, it was a, if, I'm, if memory serves me correct, it was a Saturday during the day, round about Christmas, um, maybe not the best time or whatever. But what I'm saying is we all as supporters sat on our hands in relation to this. Um, you know, uh, the, the warning signs were there and maybe there was too much trust of certain individuals that everything was grand. You know, I do go back to that interview that Sean O'Connor did um, in the Irish Independent. I'm not, but like he wouldn't talk about the debts, but it was just dismissed. Oh, uh, refused to be drawn on the debts. So it uh, mustn't be true. Club isn't for sale. Well, it was, you know, and and this is Nico with Sean, by the way, and please don't take this. It just comes into my head. But his dad, Mickey, for example, what he did for Belorgan United was huge. And this is an example of, you know, one person can drive something. You see it in Sligo. Sligo do so much, and we praise Sligo. But it's not 100 people in Sligo making this happen. Yeah, every fan chips in on that. But there's a few people driving different things. It's a handful of people, but it's about getting the right people. And we definitely have the right people in this community. And I get, look, it's difficult where time for us all is is of the essence. Like we've did, we all have different things going on in our lives, you know, between work, um, you know, if you've kids, if you've, you know, in your case, I know you're doing a bit of coaching, etc. Time is hard to come by, or whatever. But, um, you know, I don't know what the future holds in terms of all this, but. It needs to be the wake up call because I go back to that analogy I gave where in 2020 or 2012 or whatever, you know, we were the guy who got the heart attack, but, you know, it didn't knock him out. Um, and we didn't look after ourselves then to many in many respects. But we, if we get another chance. Is this is this the occasion? I don't know. There's not great history of it, but you you have to hope, um, because as I as I go back to, the reason I feel so sad about it is because of what Dundalk means for this community, and yeah, great nights and great memories and all that, but from title wins and all that, but it's 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 about the people you meet, it's about the friendships you make, it's like even you and you're not originally from here. How many people do you know? Many people talk to you because of Dundalk FC. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's 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 huge. That and that's what it does for the town. And and look, I thought Dermot Keeley probably said it best. You know, when when the clubs taking the, the you know the, the the town's taking or whatever the exact phrase was, something along those lines. But um, you know, that's what you risk losing. That's it. Yeah. It is a heartbeat of the town. But it's it's not even about the the silverware is great. Like then I don't care whether you're to put it in Premier League terms, whether you're a United fan, Liverpool fan, Arsenal fan, City fan, you'll have your up and down years. But it's the you know, it's it's about the connections, I think, for me anyway. You know, I'm very lucky to know so many great people, gentlemen, ladies, whatever, um, through that football club. Yeah, listen, you're not going to get on with everyone. That's fine. Um, but like you, you look at groups like, and just off the top of my head, the Thai rap gang. You know, I'm not a member of that gang. I haven't really been in their um company a whole pile. But what I mean, like they look a tight knit group of lads, great mates to do very good work for, you know, community and charity and all that. And it's all true football. You know, and that's the beauty of it. Like you know. Friendships are hard to come by, um, particularly the older you get, like really good friendships. I'm lucky, I have a few, etc. But so many have been born out of that club, really have, um, for everyone. And it would be sad if there was no Dundalk FC, but look, I don't see a good way out of this, but hopefully there is a way out of it.
You did uh, reference our former manager, Dermot Keeley, there. So just as a point before we move on, uh, he is launching his new book, uh, his autobiography, actually, Better Without the Ball. And he's doing a Q&A session in the end of McGill suite uh, at Oriel Park on Thursday, September 19th to half seven as well. Um, so we will just quickly go to our sponsors, uh, the unit, for their advert, and then we will look... Uh, very shortly because i know we're probably about an hour and a half in so i'd say this is where people are going to start turning off but if you want to stay on for another two minutes and we'll have a chat uh, about our game against pats and our game now upcoming against waterford and then we will let you go but uh here is our sponsors the unit today's episode is powered by the unit experts in building innovative products for the betting i gaming and sports industries they're the brains behind building innovative products tailored for those who love the game as much as we do. From software that powers up the betting world to platforms that enhance how we engage with our favourite sports, The Unit is leading the charge. The Unit, a winning team that reminds me of the Kenny Era Dundalk and their consistency in results. Proud sponsors of the Press Box podcast. Learn more at theunit.dev. Right, well... Funny enough, before all this kind of nonsense and all came out, we were playing Pats and Kenny was coming home to Oriel and stuff. And yet a minute in, bang, we're one up with Owen Kenny scoring against his dad and stuff. But uh, obviously it uh, very quickly fell apart. But the only thing I'd say about that whole thing is, and it's honestly in a an impressions thing. And like on my own personal, like Craig Colgan Twitter, I've probably 12 followers and it's not a big thing but I tweeted like a month or two ago saying this keeper is going to get us relegated now clearly it'll be a lot more than just the keeper now when all we look back but it keeps getting likes and all every day off random people and stuff like that it keeps building but he was all over the place the other day and I like again I can't remember whose comment it was the other day like do Blackburn have some claws or something in this like like there's just no way this young fella can just continually keep playing from the, the defenders didn't want to give him the ball and stuff and, and again there's an element of sympathy I have for him because he, he just he's sadly he's all over the place but like in a dogfight in this sense we genuinely just need to put somebody in that gives us a bit of kind of bait and like and we did we, we chances and stuff but ultimately we just came up short again yeah I, to be fair I don't know if I'd necessarily fault him for either goal um I'm not faulting him for the goals. I'm faulting him for yeah, the but yeah, he he had a difficult first half. He 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 did his best to give us all heart attacks at some point or another. Um, but yeah, look, go back to Torreson. It feels like so long ago now. Like there was a there was a weird atmosphere around the place. Just be like the news had obviously broken about you know troubles, and I think even though it was only confirmed officially afterwards, um. The, you know, word that got out that the players weren't maybe being paid or whatever. And look, we we probably spent enough time, not just us, but the fan base in general, probably spent enough time criticising this season in general. But to be fair, I don't think it was for the the lack of effort again. Um, you know, which is which was admirable, con, admirable. Sorry, uh, considering everything gone on. Um, and it was a great start and and wonderful for Kenny own that is to you know score his first league goal and particularly you couldn't script it better against your dads and if it had a finish at half time everyone would have went home happy and um you know unfortunately you know I think John Daly summed it up when he said, you know, when, when a centre back Tom Gravosti scoring overhead kicks, you know, your luck's out and, and then it look it was it was it was a good a good winner by Melia. Like maybe if you're being overly critical, both goals were prevented. Like the the the, the initial free kick in the build up to Gravosti's goal should have been cleared. Maybe it wasn't even a free kick. Um, and then you, you, you when your luck's out, like Andy Boyle with a volley or, <laughs> or half volley or whatever it was, you know, off the line by by Jamie Lennon. Um, you know, and then the big penalty shout at the end. Like I think Damian McGrath is probably the only man in Oriel Park. Who didn't feel that was a penalty when Aaron Bulger clattered into Dara Keane. And, you know, again, when your luck's out, and I think there would have been a lot more anger about that 
had it not been this surreal atmosphere where we kind of knew we were like as much as battling to get off the bottom there's probably a bigger battle or certainly there was at that point and probably still is um so that made it sort of weird that I, I think there would have been a lot of fury over that normally and then maybe look it was a tourist night probably less people hanging around after the game and stuff so it it, it just it had a it had a strange atmosphere but definitely a game you know we look back on with regrets i think you know definitely for me anyway definitely deserved a, a penalty you know that probably would have rescued a point for us which you know maybe would have been a good point uh Drata are obviously in the cup now this weekend so we are playing waterford hopefully um and again I don't know. Like I, they're they're not a team in form and stuff, but I think we're we're all going wrong. Maybe we galvanize, but again, yeah, maybe we just get another feat. And as you say, it's just another kind of game ticked off the list of negative results, negative everything. But you know, they're not a team in huge form, and at this stage. Even points. I used to be coming on here saying, okay, we, we need wins here and there. We probably don't need necessarily a lot of wins, but I think, well, we do need wins. But like if we got a few draws here and there, I actually think we still could come night. But uh, it's possible. But again, Waterford also a team that could put four past you, but they also could concede four. So like uh, they're kind of in a very, very funny uh, vein of form themselves. Yeah. Like they've lost uh, in their last six, they've won one, which was that come from behind 3-2 victory away to Bows and they've lost the other five and in between that they also went out of the cup to at home to at loan so like for a team who I think again there'll be matches in hand etc but they can go third if they beat us so there's plenty of incentive for them but they, they, they definitely have stuttered now it's be, it, if the season ended tomorrow it's been a brilliant year for Waterford because you know you're last into the league in terms of coming up via the playoffs I think staying up's a good season, and and they've more than done that. So it's it's been it's been a good year for them. Um, I do think since Melissa Asamoah went uh, in the summer, they've maybe lacked a little bit of the spark that made them so special. Uh, our last visit there was back in May. Noel it happened to be Noel King's last game in charge, and he got a hat trick that night, and they beat us four one, and he was you know almost unplayable. Um, so. Look, maybe it's a good time to be getting them, but like they'll probably say it's a good time to be getting the dock as well because they probably need a bit of a pick me up as well. And we're probably that team that everyone wants to face when they need that. Um, so look again, as I say, a lot can change in between, but the players are, to the best of my knowledge are prepping for the game, they're gonna fulfill the fixture. Um, I don't know exactly what the the complete I haven't spoke to John Daly since Thursday or anything, but um I don't know what exactly the you know it's, it's obviously going to be an odd week to, and you're still sweating on payments as we're recording this. So you'd like to think that maybe they will be sorted out by then, hopefully, and that might give everyone a bit of a lift. But um like it's it's tough for supporters, but it has to be even tougher for um players as well, because you to talk us like so someone like Dan Pike, you know, looking for positives. I think he's been quite good in the last few matches since moving to right back. He obviously had a difficult start, but certainly since moving to right back has been a positive in recent weeks for me anyway. And his long throw has been a good weapon. And obviously we got the goal against Pats from that. I spoke to Dan recently and like he's here in theory on an 18 month deal. Uh, was expecting to be here for next year. When when I spoke to him, he said he didn't want to be playing in the first division, which is understandable. Um, but like he's planning to be here into twenty twenty five, and like all that's up in the air now. So, um, players who probably were hopeful of getting a new contract, regardless of whether we went up or went down, you know what happens with them. So it's a really uncertain time for players. Um, and. I'd love to see them go in a bit of a run now. It may not matter depending on what happens off the field, sadly, but maybe in, in one way that will release a bit of pressure and where they're playing free now where, do you know what, lads, we may end up getting relegated, but do you know what, make the FAI do it to us rather than us just be last or something. I don't know. Maybe that's reverse psychology, but um, 
you're still, and again, I'm not trying to be delusional or whatever, but you're still hoping upon hope that, you know, you get one win and it maybe kickstart something um, and gives a bit of confidence. Because, again, to be fair, there's not a lot in the Shells game the week before. There's not a lot of, you know, you get that penalty against Pat, you're probably saying it's not a bad point. Uh, if, buts, maybes and all that. But, you know, if you can go to Waterford and win, you're off the bottom. Okay, draw the still of a game in hand, but you're, you know, you're at least looking ahead then. You're going to wait to Sligo where should they got relegated already, didn't they, according to you? So uh nice handy one there. And uh now, but like you know what I mean? It like, again the the fate of this side might be decided off the field, but if they can if we do manage to see out the season, I think the boot did be within the rights to maybe go and strike at this stage the players. I don't think they're gonna do that, at least not yet anyway. Um but you know, if they continue on and and get a few results, I think it'd be, you know, fair play to them, you know, and I think they, they, they deserve our support. I don't know how many will go to Waterford, especially with everything happening, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens Friday. It's, 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 hard, it's very hard to talk about football at the moment with all with, with so much going on um, outside of it. Well, randomly with football, and one of our players, El Sam Durant, actually made his debut for Sri Lanka the weekend. And um, tonight, uh, on Tuesday, anyway, they beat Cambodia 4 2 on penalties, and he actually scored the second penalty. So at least one of our players is uh, doing something. Um, as well, the yeah. 1903, uh, the guys are holding their fundraising event as a music bingo event in Liz Do on October 12th. So the doors are going to be open at half seven with tickets at 20 quid each or 190 for a table at 10. And all the Proceeds are going to go towards supporters' base projects around Oriel Park. Um, before we go, uh, we are going to bring you just a quick roundup of the underage roundup, underage action, even with uh, as always sponsored by Jerry McNamee Consultants. I'll just fire through this for you. Um, on Saturday, the men's twenties had a one-all draw at home to Atlone Town with Liam O'Leary giving the Lily Whites lead on eighteen minutes, um, only for Cameron. Kai Gary to equalise for the Midlanders uh, 11 minutes from the end. It was a mixed Sunday for the two of Dundalk underage sides against Longford. The men's 17s lost 2 0 in Longford, but the 14s uh, had better luck when a 5 0 away from home with Luke Cullen, uh, Mason Molyneux, and Jamie Fitzgerald among the scorers. Uh, this Saturday, the men's 20s host Galway United, the Oriel at half one, and the women's 17s are at home to Mayo at five. Uh, the men's 15s are also away to it alone at two. On Sunday then, the women's 19s host Finn Harps in Oriel Park at five and prior to that, the men's 17s are at home to it alone town at half one while the men's 14s are away to Sligo at one. That is that from the press box. Again, we want to thank all our sponsors, uh, main sponsors, the unit. We want to thank our associate sponsors for keeping our show on the road. Player Fit, Jerry McNamee Consultants, uh, Malone Financial Services. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And that's also brought to you by Mullins on the Castletown Road. Uh, hopefully there is a bit more light at the end of the tunnel next week. And maybe we might even get three points in Waterford. We'll talk to you next week. Look how the stars turn on. Look how the stars